So hi and welcome back to this um, video about the membrane potential of cells. And this video is super important to understand. It is super vital for your understanding of the, uh, the topic of action potential. And action potential is very important, not only for your second self-control and your finals, but also for the second semester and the year two and anything that really pertains to the fundamentals of biology. So I want you to really take your time and review this video or maybe rewind or pause to think about what is said so you'd have a firm understanding of what is going on. So in this video we're going to discuss the Nernst equation, the equilibrium potential. This is really the same idea and I'm using both, I'm using both uh, notions and if, for a purpose so you'd be able to, to identify those because sometimes when someone says diffusion potential or diffusion potential is referred to, you need to understand that it refers to the goldman hodgkin counts equation. But we're also going to combine these two. We're also going to combine these two and see what is the logic behind it. And this is also going to give you a nice firm basis for action potential. Let's get started. And before you look at this equation and gasp and wonder how am I supposed to remember all of this, it is not too bad. And before we get to the logics of it, what we need to understand is that if I have a cell, if I have a cell, and this cell has a specific ion inside of it, let's just say it's potassium, inside of it and outside of it in a given concentration, when this cell is going to reach a certain a certain electric uh, difference from its environment or a certain electric potential, a certain membrane potential, then this ion is really not going to have any net flux. And what I mean by that is that there is going to be a specific potential that this cell is going to be, let's just say negative 89 millivolts, is going to be the negative, the, uh, the potential or the, uh, yes, the membrane potential at which this ion is going to flow in and out at the same rate. It's not going to have a net flow. And for every, every given ion, based on its concentration in or out, this number is different. And what do I mean? What do I mean? Let's just say I can plug into this equation, and this equation is really the universal gas constant, the absolute temperature, the charge of the ion, uh, the constant, the Faraday's constant, the concentration inside and the concentration outside of the cell of a given ion. So I can plug these figures with respect to potassium with 5 millimoles inside and 140 uh, millimoles, um, sorry, 140 millimoles inside and 5 millimoles outside. And if I plug them into this equation, I would get negative 89 millivolts. And this means that if this cell is ever going to be at negative 89 millivolts, this ion that I plugged in, potassium ions, are not going to have any net flux across it. And also, that also means that potassium is going to want to make the cell at negative 89. And I'm going to throw, I'm going to throw an example your way that is, exists also in the lecture slides. And bear with me, this example is going to make things a little bit easier. I know that the equilibrium potential of potassium given by the Nernst equation is minus 89. That means that it, at this point, potassium is going to be at equilibrium, meaning that it's not going to have any net flux, equilibrium for equilibrium. It's not going to have any net flux in or out. Let's see what this means. Let's just say I have inside the cell, I have, I have negative 120 millivolts, negative 120 millivolts. And I'm asking, my question is, what is potassium, what is potassium going to do? Is potassium going to want to come into the cell or is potassium going to want to get out of the cell if the cell is at 120? Well, let's think about it. Potassium is going to want to get to negative 89. That's where it's comfortable at. And the cell is at negative 120. So the way to make the cell get to negative 89 is to make it more positive, is to make it to add positive charge to it. 
And if I want to add positive charge to it, potassium is going to go in because potassium is positively charged. So potassium is going to go in and slowly and slowly increase the membrane potential to negative 89 millivolts. Perfect. Let's ask what would happen at a situation, what would happen in a situation that inside the cell I would have uh, plus 20, plus 20 millivolts. What would happen then? Well, again, potassium would want to get to negative 89. That's where it's comfortable at. That is equilibrium potential. So plus 20 millivolts is more, more positive than the equilibrium potential for potassium. So potassium is going to want to make the cell more negative. And in order for the cell to be more negative, potassium has to escape the cell because then I have positive charges leaving positive charges leaving the cell. So potassium is going to escape the cell until the cell's membrane potential is going to get to negative 89 millivolts. And this is the effect potassium is going to have all in its own. And if we have a cell, if we have a cell here in which its own membrane potential is negative 89 millivolts, that means that potassium is not really going to have any net flow it's not really going to have any net flow across the membrane because it's really comfortable. And what we need to understand are two different concepts. One is the membrane potential, membrane potential, and one is the equilibrium potential. And they're often confused. The membrane potential is saying, what is my membrane at right now? It was at 120, or, and then it shifted and changed to minus 89, and then this membrane was at plus 20. It's asking, what is my cell, what is my cell's potential? What is my cell's potential? And the equilibrium potential is really the potential or the voltage, or the, you can think of it as the voltage difference at which there is going to be equilibrium. There's going to be equilibrium for a given ion, for potassium, for example. And then it's going to be uh, the, um, the ions, ions potential, the ions on equilibrium potential. And I'm going to throw another example your way just to, to hit that point home. Let's just say that calculated by the Nernst equation, I have another ion called uh, sodium, and sodium's equilibrium potential is plus 60. It's plus 60. Now I have a cell in which its membrane potential it's membrane, membrane, I'm just going to use membrane potential is currently at plus 20. So what is potassium going to want to do? Is potassium going to want to go in the cell or is potassium going to want to get out of the cell? Let's think about it. Potassium is comfortable at plus 60 and the cell is only at plus 20. That means potassium is going to want to make the cell more positive to climb up and get it to plus 60. So potassium is going to have to go into the cell. So at this point, potassium is going to go into the cell, add positive charges, and increase the membrane potential. Hopefully you've understood that the uh, equilibrium potential only applies to one ion, really. It only takes into consideration the concentrations inside and outside of one ion. So if we're looking at the Nernst, Nernst equation, and we're wondering, what, what characterizes the Nernst equation? First of all, it's, it only gives, gives or calculates or solves for one ion species, for one ion. And we know that we have multiple ions going in and out. We, ha we know that we have sodium, we have chlorine, we have calcium, we have, we have potassium, we have other additional ions coming in and out. And this equation only really refers to one of them. So it doesn't really give us a real situation. Only be, oh, and also because there's no net flux in or out when we get to the equilibrium potential calculated by the Nernst equation, it is at a thermodynamic equilibrium. This is the definition of thermodynamic equilibrium. Ek for equilibrium, ek. Thermodynamic equilibrium, being that there's no net transport of matter. That is a thermodynamic equilibrium. And we know that cells are not in thermodynamic equilibrium. We mentioned that already. Cells are not in thermodynamic equilibrium. 
And what we need to understand is that because it's a thermodynamic equilibrium, there's no energy, energy invested in maintaining a Nernst potential or uh, an equilibrium potential for an ion. But cells do invest energy, and they are not in a thermodynamic equilibrium. So this Nernst equation doesn't really, uh, doesn't really give us the, uh, really what is going on in a cell. It just gives us at what point, at what point would a given ion not have a net flux? At what point would a given ion be comfortable? And this is going to be important a little later on. So now that we know that the Nernst equation refers to uh, a potential of a given ion to reach a zero net flux, and by zero net flux, I mean that there's not, that maybe, maybe it's going in, but for every one ion going in, there's one ion going out. So there isn't a change in concentration, and that's what I mean by no net flux or zero net flux. This is how the department likes to phrase it. So it's good to know in case you have some sort of relation analysis or true or false question. We're going to advance into the goldman hodgkin tufts equation. And right out the bat, you see that it's more complicated. And in physics, if something is more complicated, maybe it's better. So let's try and see if that is the case. First of all, we see the, uh, these ingredients that already existed in our uh, Nernst equation. And we see, first of all, that we have the calculation for different ions. We don't only have them for one ion. So this is already more realistic. And what this also means, this P, represents the permeability of given ions, which is kind of interesting because what this equation says is, let's just say I have a membrane here. I'm going to draw it over there just so it wouldn't, it wouldn't crowd me over here. Let's say I have a membrane here, okay? And I have, let's just say, I have a high gradient of 140 potassiums or 140 millimolars of potassium inside the cell and five millimolars of potassium of potassium outside the cell. That means that potassium is really going to want to move through. There's a very, very noticeable chemical gradient here. But the goldman hodgkin cuts equation says, well, what good is this gradient if all the channels potassium can go through are blocked? They're blocked. That means potassium, even though it has a very very great gradient, very, uh, very massive gradient that makes it want to go through to the other side, or rather this way, sorry, through to the other side. All the channels are blocked. And we know that ions can't cross the cell membranes by themselves. And even, even though there's a very large difference in gradient or in concentration here, the channels are blocked. There go, ergo, this ion is not going to have an effect on my membrane potential because it can't really move. So it can't, it can't put out charge or give in or take in charge, so it's not going to affect the charge of my membrane. And this is interesting because we didn't have that in the goldman hodgkin cuts. All we had in the goldman hodgkin cuts is give me the inside and outside concentration and I'll give you a figure. But now, what, what, uh, and the, sorry, and the Nernst equation. In the Nernst equation, we only used the inside and outside concentrations. What the goldman hodgkin cuts suggests is that I need the, in, the intracellular and the extracellular concentrations. And I also need the permeability. Because if the permeability is zero for a given concentration gradient, then it's not going to have any effect. And also what I want is all the ions. Don't give me just one because it's not really what's taking place. Give me all the ions so I'll be able to really calculate and solve for what is my membrane potential. And when you think about it, when you think about it, if I have a cell membrane here, or a, yeah, if I have a cell membrane here, and I have plenty of ions, I have chlorine, I have potassium, I have sodium, and they're all present both inside the cell and outside the cell, and they both have various channels, various channels that they can go through. I really need to know the, first of all, I need to know how much is outside and then how much is inside for every ion. How much is inside, how much is outside. And also, are the gates open? How many gates are open? Are they open all the way or are they all closed? To know what the effect of this ion is going to be on the cell membrane. 
And if it's not intuitive, take your time understanding it, because it doesn't always it doesn't always uh, fit in smoothly the first time you hear it. So I'm going to say this again: Every ion can have an effect by either moving in or moving out of the cell because it carries charge with it. So it's going to affect the membrane potential. So it's going to affect the membrane potential. And the given ion can move in and out based on two things. One is what is its gradient? Because if there's a difference, let's say a thousand on this side and one on this side, the difference is so great that it's really going to want to move in. So there's going to be a lot of very fast flow. So it's dependent on the chemical gradient and it's also dependent on the permeability. If this is the channel for chlorine, is this channel open or closed? Because if it's closed, it doesn't matter if I have a million here and one here. It's not going to be able to move at all at any speed. So these are the two concentrations that the equation refers to. And that is why the GH equation takes into account the total permeability of all the ions present and all of their concentration. It gives me a true reading of what is really going on in a cell. So I'm going to just summarize here and say the, GH, the GHK equation represents all ion species. All ion species. It also represents all their permeabilities. It also represents all its permeabilities. It is not at thermodynamic equilibrium. Thermodynamic equilibrium. Why is that? Because the GHK equation allows, allows for one potassium to go in while, uh, one, while one sodium goes out. And that's how it preserves the uh, membrane potential, preserves the charge, because I have one charge, one positive going in, but one positive going out. So there is, there is a net flux of different ions across the membrane, but the membrane potential is going to stay the same because we need this cell to be negative. Remember, it's really important for us to have a negative cell. And if we take one positive, we can take out another positive. Doesn't matter what it is. So we do have a net flux of transport of particles. So it's not a thermodynamic equilibrium. It's not a point where one potassium going in is one potassium going out. So it's not a thermodynamic equilibrium. And this is very important to understand. And I'm going to add here, there is a net flux. Flux of, let's just, let's just say, a net flux would be enough because it could be a net flux for any ion that is moving. There we go. And this actually well, or I would say adequately, adequately explains, explains living, living cells. This is really what's going on. And also what's important to understand, I'm going to add it, I'm going to add it to my summary here, is it requires, requires energy. It requires energy and we know that the cell actually utilizes energy, mainly in the form of ATP, to carry out different tasks. So perfect. Now we have a nice description. Now we have a nice description of what's going on. And this is in the minimals and although it's in the minimals, I have not seen any past paper that, um, that the department asks you to either uh, write down this minimal or use it to calculate. But the, the, uh, the Nernst equation was used for calculations and I think two exams. So uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't bear to, uh, I wouldn't actually bother memorizing this, I wouldn't imagine. And now what I want to do is to go through the the combination of the two. And if you're wondering, what do I mean? Well, I mean this, this thing. This thing that you may have seen in the lecture or you may have seen in the seminar and you were sitting down wondering what the something is going on. So I'm going to make it slightly, slightly more, hopefully slightly more intuitive to you because this is my goal. So let's see. I have my negative membrane potential at minus 70. My cell is happy, it's healthy, it has a negative membrane potential and calculated by the Goldman-Hodgkin-Cutts equation, we have a certain concentration of, of these ions in and out. They have certain permeabilities. Some channels are open, some are less open and this generates this potential. Perfect. 
what happens if I increase, let's just say, and I'm going to, oh, no, 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 let's go, into, there you go, right here, I'm going to get to here, this is time point, let's say time point one, and at time point one, at time point one, I'm going to increase the sodium penetrability, P for penetrability, I'm going to increase the sodium's penetrability to 100%, and the potassium's penetrability to 0, 0%. What is going to happen? Basically, I'm closing, I'm closing all the potassium gates, and I'm opening all the sodium gates at once. And if you recall, if you recall, the, the sodiums, the sodiums uh, equilibrium potential is plus 60, given by the Nernst equation. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give the exact same example that I gave before. I have a cell that is at negative 70 millivolts and I have uh, potassium, that its equilibrium potential is plus 60. And potassium is comfortable at plus 60. Potassium is comfortable at plus 60. So what is potassium going to do if all its channels are open? Is it going to go in to make it plus 60 or going to go out to make it plus 60? Well, let's think. Now all the doors are open, and potassium wants to make this cell uh, a plus 60 because that's where it's comfortable. So it's going to flow in to get that negative 70 closer to plus 60. So potassium is going to flow in. So effectively, when I open all of these gates for potassium, and only the potassium gates are open, nobody else is interfering, all the other gates are closed, then my membrane potential is going to reach, my membrane potential is going to reach the sodium's, sodium's equilibrium potential. And let me explain again why. Here, here at this point, I have certain gates open, certain gates closed for different ions, for different concentrations. But then I said, all of a sudden here, I said, hey, you know what? I'm going to close, close all, the, all the channels for sodium. So sodium is not going to have any effect, any effect at all. And I'm going to open all the, sorry, did I say sodium? I'm going to close all the potassium channels. K for potassium, sorry. So I'm going to close all the potassium channels. So potassium is not going to have any effect. And I'm going to open all the sodium channels. So only the sodium, only that, this ion, just like the Nernst equation that calculates for one ion, so only this ion is going to have an effect on my cell. And, and this ion likes plus 60, and the cell is at negative 70. So this ion is going to go into the cell and it's going to make the cell plus 60, just like it likes. So there it is. And this is why the membrane is going to turn to plus 60. There you go. It's going to turn to plus 60, and th this is where it's going to be. Very good. Now what happens if I, if I just go back, if I just go back, uh, went back too much. Where was I? There you go. If I just go back to opening the potassium gates, and let's say I open all the potassium gates. I'm going to go, this, is, this was T1, and now I'm at T2. And what am I doing on T2? Let's take a look at T2. I'm going to play with this a little bit. On T2, what I'm going to do, T2, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the permeability of sodium and turn it to zero. I'm going to close all of the channels. I'm going to close all the channels for sodium. And I'm going to take the permeability for potassium, and I'm going to get it to boost it to 100%. And what you can expect to have happen, I'm going to move here a little bit, and I'm going to do this on the side. The potassium equilibrium potential is minus 89, as calculated by the Nernst equation. That means the potassium wants to make, wants to get to 89 if it can. So if my cell, my cell is at plus 60, my cell is at plus 60 now, because sodium, sodium turned it, to plus 60, so I'm at plus 60 now, and potassium wants minus 89. So now I want you to pause the video and think about what is going to happen. And if you've thought of it really, what potassium wants to do is potassium wants to make this more negative. Potassium wants to take plus 60 and drop it down to negative 89, because this is where potassium is comfortable. Potassium is comfortable with negative 89. So if all the potassium channels open and suddenly potassium is the only one that can travel in and out because all the other gates are closed, we closed 
all of the uh, sodium gates. Potassium is going to want to make the cell more negative by escaping, by losing positive charges, by losing positive charges, this cell is going to turn more negative. And it's going to get to negative 89. And how is this going to look? Well, at time point 2, and I'm going to make this red just to be consistent, at time point, time point 2 here, I just messed it up, at time point 2, all the sodium gates are going to close and all the potassium gates are going to open. Potassium is going to want to make the cell get to its own equilibrium potential, and I'm going to get to negative 89. And if I go back at time point, time point 3, to my initial total permeability that I had uh, by the Goldman Hodgkin cuts, let's say I open back the sodium to where it was, let's say the beginning point was sodium is open at 22%, and uh, potassium is open at 61%, whatever. And if I go back, if I go back to this, and I will be able to go back to my minus center. So this is the idea. And maybe uh, if you don't fully understand it, you can repeat the explanation. But what you really need to understand, and it's the following statement, that, and this is, if you understand this, it's really good because this is how they phrase it as well, I find. When the permeability, when the permeability for a given ion, given ion increases, increases dramatically, and really it's really important dramatically. And by dramatically, dramatically, increases dramatically. That means that not only is it high, it's high and compared to all the other permeabilities. So not only is it at 98%, which is really high, all the other permeabilities are really, really low, maybe only 1%, maybe only 1%. So it's dramatically large in value and also in comparison to the other permeabilities of the other ions. So when the permeability for a given ion increases dramatically, the resting the resting membrane potential is going, is going to, uh, I would say, in essence, it is going to get closer, closer to the given ion, given ions equilibrium, equilibrium potential. And what I mean by that potential. And what I mean by that is when the permeability of sodium increased dramatically at time point one, at time point one, sodium wanted to make the resting membrane potential, which is this line, the resting membrane potential, climb up to get to its own, to its own equilibrium potential. And when the permeability for potassium went up dramatically, then the permeability for sodium stopped then p potassium wanted to get my line here representing the membrane potential to get as close as possible to its own to its own equilibrium potential and this is what the Nernst equation is good for it's good for uh, it's good for figuring out or estimating what my membrane to potential is going to to get to if I increase the permeability for a given ion I do realize it's quite, the, uh, it's quite the subject to understand, but I really, really hope I made it slightly, uh, slightly more bearable. Take your time and watch this video, uh, maybe, maybe more, maybe uh, rewind it to get an idea as to what is the GHK and uh, the Nernst equation because you will need it. So I'll see you in the next, next video.